one of the problems was that we didn't have much experience with playing Gran Turismo ourselves. So a colleague from PlayStation Marketing started talking to us and I was like, hey, I know this guy. We worked with a retired GT driver in Zurich, uh, Tim, and he was really instrumental in teaching us about the details and nuances of race car driving. So when I first said to Tim this goal of beating the best human drivers in a direct head-to-head -head comparison... <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought. So I remember the first test that we did with Tim during the time at Sony AI. Tim was just aggressively pushed off the track. And at first he was amused, but over time he got quite frustrated. It was very wobbly. They just um, went from side to side all the time with the car. Uh, it wasn't really that good, but it was very fast. We know what it means to drive fast. But the whole overtaking challenge is so much more difficult than just driving on the track by itself. He gave us all these ideas with regard to what are the kinds of skills that you want GT Sophie to learn about. If you're going to go and try to race the best in the world at Gran Turismo, you really can't do it with just you know two PlayStations lying around and a laptop. You're going to need some serious compute. You're going to need a lot of PlayStations to try a lot of things. I just like building things. I, I like making things work. I like making things efficient. I like making things better. Florian had the rack of PlayStation and had done all the training locally with one computer there. But in order to scale this up, you couldn't have everything on one machine. He had about 10 PlayStations or so, but he could only use like four at a time. I remember spending a month writing some hastily written code to split these GPUs on this machine so that we could run 12 or 16 experiments. A couple of months later, we got like another new GPU machine added to a cluster. We managed to get up to like 30 experiments or so. One of the great things about Sony is we have the opportunity to build these kind of gaming AI technologies at scale. Sony Interactive Entertainment has many PlayStations that they're running in the cloud. All of those cloud PlayStations are intended for users, but the users aren't using them all of the time. So going from 40 PlayStations to thousands meant that you could train GT Sophie to not just get around the track, but to race around the track at good speed in a day. So you can run many different games at the same time in parallel. So we were able to train GT Sophie to compete with the best racers really quickly. So we do these races with Tim, where we have one GT Sophie in front for him to catch and one behind him in kind of the vain hope that we might one day catch him. And early on, uh, GT Sophie was no match. And he would even sometimes catch uh, a GT Sophie that was started way out front. We took all those lessons to heart. We built new training scenarios. We made architecture modifications. And then one day, Tim was really hyper-focused on the GT Sophie version in front. But we saw in the rear view mirror of Tim, the other GT Sophie agents start to come up on him. And then it made this flash of a pass and Tim said, whoa, what was that? And that was a big moment for us because we had finally made a real pass against a truly skillful human. It was just mind blowing. The most stressful thing in the project was definitely the July exhibition. We were very nervous because just a week before the event, we were told that the GT Sophie is very aggressive. And they told us if we raced them, they'd get black carded. You'd be like flagged out of the race. Sportsmanship is very hard because the rules of racing aren't written down in like clear, easy to define rules. In real racing, you have to have some level of etiquette and, and rules to make sure no one's going to do anything that puts anyone's life at, at undue risk. And so in the video game, they're trying to capture the full racing experience of, of what it's like. And that means not driving people off the road. Often those rules are not like exactly specified. So getting the AI to drive in a sporting way, to be polite, respect other people while also being competitive is very challenging. So we worked very hard on modifying this reward function and lowering down the thresholds. 
So that was one week before the actual event. So that was kind of horrifying. Hello everyone, my name is Sasha. Today, I'm at the Polyphony Digital Studio, the renowned makers of the PlayStation game titled Gran Turismo. Soon, there will be a historic race between an AI agent developed by Sony AI and GT top drivers, including the current world champion. The exhibitions were set up to be 4v4. So there were four humans against four AIs, and we interleaved the humans and the AIs. And then we did three track combinations. After each race, you look at all the positions that the cars have taken. Every position has a point associated with it, and you tally points. And then the last track uh, was worth uh, double points. There were five of us who lived in the Boston area at the time of the July race. Then we gathered that evening to watch the race live from my living room sofa. I was in the Sony AI office in Zurich, so we were essentially on a Zoom call with the team. I would say I was confident that we would pose a challenge. We were faster uh, by ourselves, and that proved itself out in the qualifying laps, which we were always running faster than the humans. We would definitely not make it easy for them. So Race Together 2021 is underway. It's Sophie Bordeaux that leads the field over the timing line. Every time the GT stop, it would come very close to opponent, or uh, I was like, OK, <laughs> don't crash into it now. It's very stressful to watch the agent just drive in an actual competition because it's moments away from you know a massive accident. Things kind of went a little awry from the start, I would say. Literally, the start of the seaside race. Three down the inside of Yamanaka, not quite through there. So now there is a big split between the top AI, which is Sophie Bordeaux, and our top Gran Turismo drivers in second down to fifth place, respectively. They knew our cars were really fast, but what the human players had learned to do really well is they were able to hold their positions. And it's a very short race, and so once we had fallen behind, there wasn't much time to catch up. The first GT Sophie car ran away and won the race, but we didn't feel all that good about that because the humans finished two, three, four, and five, and our cars were never really in the mix with them. 23 points to our pro GT drivers, 16 points for GT Sophie, of course, as a result of those finishing positions. We had a tough time in race one. There was like a quick huddle in a conference call. We were all sort of looking at each other, trying to figure out, all right, let's see what we can do for the next race. And we did make some changes. If it works out well, it's a nice story, but if it doesn't work out well, you're gonna kick yourself when it actually goes bad. Race two then is underway for Race Together 2020. And the second race went quite well. It was very exciting. It was wheel to wheel the whole time. And we thought it turned into a great race. At Maggiore, we actually took the first two positions and wrestled back the points lead. Maybe we've got it. It's all up to the race three. So start is the most complicated out of these races. It also has seven laps instead of four and six laps that the other two tracks have. The last race was double the points, so we still had a chance to come back. Qualifying once again, Sophie Orange, who qualified on pole position from Takuma Mia Zono then, so it is the GT. For the final race, we had the qualifying round first. We were ahead uh, of them by about 1.4 seconds, which is a good sign for us. It's lights out and we are underway. Orange gets away well from Mia Zono. Not a bad start there. They come down towards the first corner. Essentially, our car started one and three, but by the time the first turn is done, three human drivers have taken the top three positions. Pro drivers who have the advantage in the early stages. You could see everyone's face change because now it means we have to catch up with these really good players. So we figured it'll take one lap to catch back up and then we'll be in the race again and we'll get back into second place. But what we noticed was that our cars weren't able to catch up. Even though GT Sophie was faster, it wasn't able to actually close the distance. And then finally, after a GT Sophie car caught Yamanaka and passed him, he passed it right back, right away. What a move then from Tomoaki Yamanaka to get second place back. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. It's a Japanese one-two with Yamanaka getting second place in the final stages of that race. What a phenomenal end. I wanted to go hide myself. I feel like I wanted to press leave on the Zoom call and I wanted to go into a room and you know not talk to anybody. We were expecting GT Sophie to win, but the human players were better than I expected. What was amazing was that we said, okay, is everyone on board with making it better? And everyone was on board. So we set a rematch target of the end of October. 
It felt like we had enough time to identify the problems, but it was certainly going to be a race against time to fix them. That third race at Sartre was the big hang up once again. Our card, Sophie Orange, went off the track. From pole position to last place, so Sophie Orange. So I was like, oh no. <laughs> there is such a thin line between making it and not making it. And then GT Sophie hit the gas. We were all like screaming and full of adrenaline. <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> 